Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our celebration of the sixth Sunday of Easter. As celebrant of our Father Bob, our homeless is Deacon Silveri, and our Deacon of the Mass is Deacon Bruce. Please stand for our opening hand. Father. As we begin our prayers this morning, we call to mind those who've asked for our prayers and those who are in need of our prayers. And as we pray, we include all the intentions we would normally have on Sunday. So today's Mass is being offered for Lynn Stewart, requested by the parish, Jamie D'Souza, requested by Margaret Proctor, Emily uh, Villegas, requested by the parishioners, Frank Vincent, requested by the Vargas and Wilkes family, the Galavora family, and um, Sybil Ritchie, requested by the family. And we begin our prayers this day in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And we ask for the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. As we approach the altar of the Lord, we take a moment to call to mind how much in need we are of the gift of God's mercy in our lives. The Gospel of today's Mass reminds us of the commandment Jesus left his disciples. Love one another as I have loved you. Love is the heart of the Gospel. Let us call to mind our failures to live by the commandment of love. And let us remember that the first love the Gospel talks about is the love of God for humanity. Lord Jesus, you are kind and full of compassion. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are slow to anger and abounding in love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you do not treat us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our faults. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On Peter's arrival, Cornelius, a centurion of the Italian cohort, met him and falling at his feet, worshipped him. But Peter made him get up and said, Stand up, I am only a man. Then Peter began to speak. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water of baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First letter to, of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whatever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appoint you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commandments so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all mothers and mother figures in our community of faith. It's a special day. It's also a very special weekend, Mother's Day being celebrated uh, on Sunday. And on Tuesday, May 11th, our pastor, Father Bob, celebrates 24 years of ordination to the priesthood. Congratulations, Father Bob. 25? 24. You don't celebrate 24, you celebrate 25. Is it 25? Yeah. My goodness, 25, a quarter of a century. I apologize, and once again, congratulations. We'll have to have a party for you when all this is over. <laughs> so on behalf of Father Bob and the parish, I would like to thank all mothers, all those who shape our lives and build our families and serve as our safe place. Now mothers, of course, we all know, have a very special role to play in our lives, and we learn many things from our moms. For example, my mother taught me religion. She used to say things like, you better pray, that comes out of the carpet. My mother taught me medicine. If you don't stop crossing your eyes, they're going to freeze that way. My mother taught me how to be a contortionist. Will you look at the dirt on the back of your neck? My mother taught me to appreciate the job well done. If you're going to kill each other, do it outside. I just finished cleaning. My mother taught me about genetics. You're just like your father. And my mother taught me about logic because I said so. <laughs> Don't know if any of you had mothers like that. Maybe we all had a mother like that. There's a true story about a mother who wanted to institute some uh, bedtime limits on her four-year-old daughter. And after a tough day, the mother announced firmly, tonight we're going to put your P PJs on, brush your teeth, and read one book with the emphasis on the one, and then it's lights out. Her little girl snuggled up to her and said, Mommy, we learned in Sunday school about little boys and girls who don't have mommies and daddies. 
As the mother's heart was melting over her little girl's appreciation, her daughter leaned closer and whispered to her mom, maybe you could be their mom. It's not easy being a mother. Not, of course, I wouldn't know, but uh, my wife tells me all the time, most of us have learned to appreciate the many sacrifices that our moms have made in our behalf. Jesus told his followers in today's gospel, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. Jesus' words are the model for us all, mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, as well as children and siblings and friends. Because God loves us, we are to love one another. Because God forgives us, we are to forgive one another. Because at the heart of the gospel is the self-giving love of God. In today's gospel, Jesus highlights a special relationship between love and happiness. Jesus says to his disciples, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Notice that love is essential to joy. So which begs the question, what does it take to be happy? Well, I can't give you a precise answer because it will vary according to each individual's needs. But I can say this, however, no one can truly be happy who is not in a good relationship with God and with other people. It's hard to be really happy when we live only for ourselves. To prove this point, a study of human relations was conducted at Harvard University over a period of many years. At the end of the study, the director summed it up in two sentences. Happiness is love, full stop. Jesus served as an example of this truth more than 2,000 years ago. Even when he knew he would be misunderstood and rejected and humanity would fail him. He still chose us to love, he still chose to love us on the cross and beyond. In this gospel passage, Jesus is trying to share a life-changing truth with us. Love is essential for happiness and joy. But Christ had another point to make about love. And mothers know this to no end. Love requires sacrifice. He explained it like this. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Now, it is highly unlikely that any one of us will ever be asked to die for another person, but to love them in the same manner that God loves them. We must lay down our selfishness and our prejudices and our grudges and sometimes even our so-called rights. It can take a lifetime to recognize uh, <clears throat> and lay down the, all the barriers that stand between us and loving like Jesus loves us. Here's an example. A few years ago, a young man was nearly arrested for climbing up the outside of a 19-story apartment building. Now, this wasn't some extreme sports stunt. The apartment building was on fire and the young man's mother was trapped inside. Tommy didn't think twice when he began scaling the outer wall of the burning apartment building to rescue his mother. She was bedridden and lived on the 15th floor, but police and firefighters were blocking the apartment doors, not letting anyone enter the building. Tommy reached his mother's balcony where he was able to speak to her. He also directed firefighters to her apartment. They were able to rescue her before the fire reached her apartment. An officer later told Tommy that he could have been arrested for his actions, but he would let him go with a warning. Afterwards, Tommy said this about his mother. She's not surprised by the things I do for her. She knows I'll go above and beyond. She knows I'll go above and beyond. That's the example of love that Jesus gave us. Jesus had one priority in life, to restore our relationship with God. And when we couldn't achieve that restoration on our own, 
Jesus gave up his life to secure it for us through his sacrifice of the cross. How can we then, as followers of Jesus Christ, ignore the model that Jesus provides for us? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Where there is no giving, there is no love. Now that is true within family, that is true within, between friends, that is true within society. For a society in which everyone is looking out for number one is a society in trouble. And finally, my friends, I think Jesus is telling us in this passage that love is the very essence of our faith. This is my commandment, love one another. St. Paul would later write, if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. That pretty well sums it all up. If we cannot love others, our faith is a deception. If any one of us is having trouble loving other people, then we need to re-examine our relationship with Jesus. He is the source of sacrificial love. He is our example. As he loved us, so he commands us to love others. For love is the very essence of Christian faith. If we're not able to love, then there's something very superficial about our faith. Yes, my friends, love and happiness are inseparable, but love requires sacrifice. Just ask any mother. Therefore, we must sacrifice in order to be happy. Love does not come easy in this imperfect world, but love is the central commandment of Jesus gives, that he gives to those who would be his disciples. It is what God made us for and how God planned for us to live in this world. And if we don't know that kind of love, then let us ask Jesus the Lord to be the Lord of our lives today and to discover the love that makes life worth living. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, in God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator, Creator of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, died and was buried. He descended he into, into hell. hell. On the third day, he rose again, again from the dead. dead. He, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Everyone who loves is born of God, and God knows because God is love. Let our prayers be an expression of our love for God and for one another. We pray in thanksgiving for our mothers and for those women who have given us a mother-like love. May their goodness nourish us and draw us closer to God, the source of all goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who have known little love in their lives, that the love flowing from the Christian community may give witness to the heart of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for Father Bob, who on May 11 will celebrate 25 years of fruitful service to God's people. May his love and service inspire us all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all married couples, that they may strengthen to grow in their covenant of self-giving love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the protection of all at risk in the pandemic, especially those suffering in India, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. 
for all our sick relatives and friends. We pray for those names listed in our bulletin sick list. And today, especially for Marion Brown, who is Deacon Bruce's sister, just diagnosed with cancer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who died this past week, especially Joyce Veronica Davis, those who died due to COVID-19, and those who rest in our cemeteries, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son commanded us to love one another, and he set us an example by laying down his life for us. Help us to follow his way of love, so that we may taste the joy that only love can bring. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of our hands, hands for the praise and glory of his name, name for, for our, our good and the good of all his holy, holy church. church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offering, so that, purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them up, up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, O Lord. But at this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him, the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all is risen. Therefore, overcome with bashful joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts 
sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
dare to say. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but only say, say the word, word and my soul, soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
as we pray the St. Alphonse prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of brief announcements. I guess the most important one is to, uh, of course, wish every mother a happy Mother's Day. It's such a wonderful gift to receive love from mothers. Um, I have many mothers here in the parish who love me dearly, and I'm so grateful for that. It's such a wonderful gift. So I thank you for that. Um, also, during the month of May, the Pope has asked us, as we say our rosary, to ask for an invocation of Our Lady to uh, heal the pandemic. So we pray for that. I also celebrate 25 years today, and it's, uh, or this week, and it's uh, really kind of, usually in the priest's life, a pretty great big, big thing. Um, my priest's friends usually get together. We had a Zoom call, so at least we got a chance to talk to each other um, and kind of review how we're doing after the last 25 years. And, um, of course, there's usually uh, a whole bunch of things we do, but this year, like most anniversaries, they're pretty quiet. But um, it doesn't diminish the great gift of an anniversary. So uh, I'm very, very grateful to God and grateful for you um, on this 25th anniversary to, to celebrate. So I'm grateful for that. And I wish you all a wonderful, blessed, and glorious week. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the risen resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.